This is Fisher Flying Products. I'm Dave Hertner. Welcome to the nest. Please take the time to hit the subscribe button and click on the bell so you get notified when we post new videos. What's new section this week? I'd like to introduce Gerhard St. Jean from New Caledonia. Uh, if you don't know where New Caledonia is, I put a map up here, so it is very uh, far away. He is our customer that is furthest from the nest. Gerhard built a beautiful classic, and he has just purchased a set of plans for the FP505. He's a repeat offender. As you can see from this, uh, the three uh, pictures of his uh, aircraft, he's done a beautiful job and he says it flies beautifully. Next, we're going to visit with Paul Ditzler as he flies his Dakota Hawk in formation. While you watch this video, notice how stable it flies and also the width of the main gear. Paul looks like he's having a great time flying his pride and joy. I want to take a few minutes and talk about the evolution of our uh, tailwheels for the small aircraft that we have, the, the ultralights. When uh, they were first developed, there were no small tailwheels for that small of aircraft out there readily available. And um, so the adaptation happened from the initial shopping cart wheel, uh, as you can see. and. Um, we found that that was inadequate and um, Paul Riedlinger, who had the company before me, decided that uh, he wanted to go with a cast uh, tailwheel chassis that he had found. And uh, it was a very nice unit. Um, for, and for a lot of years we ran with that, uh, with the, uh, the cast. And as you can see, they started um, with a, sort of a shopping cart wheel in the cast chassis. And that wheel didn't hold up very well. So the, the change was made over to a, a, a better wheel that we found um, made in Toronto. And it is uh, uh, a much better rubber and uh, holds up much better over, over, over time. So as you can see, we've adapted that rubber chassis or the rubber wheel into the aluminum chassis. And we ran with that for quite a while. Uh, but we found that the uh, supplier of the aluminum castings went out of business down in the States. And so we had to adapt again. And so I decided that uh, with our TIG welding capability that we have in the shop now, we would go with something that um, uh, was a chassis made out of steel that was TIG welded and then powder coated. And as you can see, it turned into quite a nice unit. Um, it's uh, very lightweight, under two pounds. And um, it serves all of our smaller aircraft uh, up into, um, but not including the Super Koala. Uh, after that, uh, earlier, or, there, we go with a, a, a tail wheel um, from Matco that uh, serves us well in the larger aircraft. So anyway, I thought I'd uh, take you through the history of the uh, small tail wheel, and uh, there you go. In the question and answer segment of our newsletter today, I want to thank Shane Baker for sending me the photos and the question, This uh, the first question anyway. Um, Shane has a Horizon 1 with a folding wing mechanism and he called me um, with a problem um, in that when he went to uh, move the wing into the flight position, uh, the wing attach brackets weren't aligning with the holes in the wing root. Um, he sent photos of the hinge mechanism thinking that it might be bent. Um, but I just wanted to say that, that this is a, a common problem in the design in that if you don't have enough clearance uh, in the airfoil shaped section 
of the upper cabin uh, where the brackets protrude into the cabin and onto the spar carry through, then you won't uh, be able to make that arc around and get into the holes properly. And so it looks like it, that the rear hinge mechanism might be bent because of the uh, the attach brackets not being aligned with the holes. But really, once you get that final arc completed, then the uh, wing attach brackets uh, will then line up with the spar. Um, it's just, you have to almost bend them a little bit to try to get them to, um, especially the aft, uh, the aft one has to be pulled back a little bit so it clears the spar carry through uh, on a completion of its arc and then it kind of gets snugged back up and the bolt or pin gets put in uh, to uh, to attach the wing to the spar carry through. Um, I hope that answers your question Shane. Uh, I mean I, I did talk to you on the uh, by email but I wanted to share that because it's common with the with the Dakota Hawk as well as the Horizon 2 in that um, that design of that rear pivot on the um, on the aft spar uh, with the uh, with the hinge point there um, causes that arcing and uh, makes it a little bit difficult to get uh, put back together. I hope that answers your question Shane and we'll move on to question number two for this week. The second question today um, that I've been asked quite often has to do with the wing folding mechanism on the FP303. I had a gentleman um, uh, call me up the other day and uh, say that he couldn't find how to build it. Um, so this is FP303 print 14 and it has a small diagram here that shows the mechanism. And as you can see um, I'm sorry you can't see my mouse that well, but um, as there's a pipe right here with a with a with a hose clamp on the end of it. The hose clamp r retains the pipe, so you've got two plywood bulkheads that the pipe slides through, and then down at the bottom here in the side of the fuselage, there's a hole that's larger that will allow this whole turnbuckle, this this universal joint to be able to be pulled right back into the fuselage when the wing comes in and is fastened in place. So I'm going to go down a little bit here and we're going to show the other view. And as you can see the hole here, the smaller hole for the pipe that slides through is on the inner piece of plywood and then the larger hole in the side plywood and the side area of the airplane allows for that universal joint to be drawn in and allow the wing to be mounted um, completely flush. Now we've been playing around with the idea of something akin to this that would allow um, many more of our models to be able to be um, converted to wing folding. Now that's a that's cool that's good um, you have to keep into a in mind though that with uh, a lot of our models have um, fuel in the wings and so if you want to fold that um, that wing up then when you're flying you need to be able to get all the the fuel out of your wings and into the main header tank uh, so that when you go to fold them there uh, you're not going to be leaking all over the place because we don't have really provision for that kind of um, if you fold it, you're generally going to fold it leading edge down and um, control surface is up, which means that the aft portion of the wing tank is going to be up uh, and the front section is going to be down and that's the thickest section. And so generally that's where the fuel filler uh, hole is. And so uh, without having to put the fuel hole filler neck in the back and change the way that the tanks are designed, you would be smart to have the tank um, emptied down to at least where um, the fuel level wouldn't uh, wouldn't be as high as the neck, uh, so you don't have leakage. But this um, this could be adapted to a number of our aircraft where you have this this bulkhead, this double bulkhead design with a sliding piece of of, of tube 
um, with a retainer on the back so that it can't come all the way out and with a universal joint built in that attaches to the wing. So I hope that explains um, a little bit more about how the wing folding mechanism works and how you might adapt it to your own airplane. I'm going to sign off now for this week. Thank you for taking the time to watch. Please take the time to hit the subscribe button and click on the bell. All of these clicks help us out in getting a farther reach to more people so that we can share our aviation. I'm going to close out with a beautiful FP303 on skis, a picture of it. Uh, have a great week and we'll see you next week.